I've seen this quite a bit over the past couple of years from wrestling fans online, certainly certain wrestling media, to some shape or form or degree insinuating that we're in a new wrestling boom period. That this is a peak period for professional wrestling. And, you know, I'm somebody, I'm old enough to have actually lived through a couple of boom periods in wrestling. You know, the mid to late 80s, especially WWF's, you know, expansion, their national and then international expansion. And then obviously the late 90s, the beginning of the 2000s, that was clearly another boom period that many more of you that are watching this video are familiar with, have lived through. And I don't think anybody looks at this era of wrestling and says it matches up to either one of those. If they do, they're kidding themselves and they should not be taken seriously. However, I'm also old enough to have seen, and many of you are as well, some real down times, some real down periods in professional wrestling. I would argue you look at the early to mid 90s, pretty bad. The mid to late 2010s, pretty bad. I'd even argue like, you know, there's some time in the mid 2000s that was kind of, ugh. there have been some down periods in wrestling that we've seen. And I certainly can't look at the current wrestling landscape and say it neatly fits into that bucket at all by any stretch of the imagination. I don't. Um, but the question is, is pro wrestling in a boom period right now? And it's interesting. I saw this uh, clip of this interview uh, on the Wrestling Inc. website. It's from the McGuire on Wrestling podcast. I've got the link to that podcast and that clip in the description box below. So check it out if you want to hear like the first person source. Uh, but Dave Meltzer of all people said, and I quote, we're in a boom period and it's kind of weird that some people don't want to accept that we are. But we are not just for match quality, but we are for popularity. It's not the biggest. It's not as big as the late 90s and it probably never will be. But since the late 90s, it's as big as it's probably ever been. Certainly there's been no number two at this level. To some people that's a big thing, but to me that's a great thing. If you're a wrestler, that's fantastic. There's more jobs and you can go back and forth. There's more money to be made. And for fans, there's more options of different things and you get more on television than at any time in history. You also have multiple promoters that are really, really into trying to give you great matches. It's part of their thing in the past, not as much. It's all about getting your money on Friday night, which is a different scientific thing. So if you like wrestling matches, this is the best time, unquote. A couple of quick reactions to what Dave said here. Uh, he's arguing that we are in a boom period, but not just for match quality, but then almost exclusively references the matches, which is not a huge surprise for Dave. Um, it is also very obvious as you listen to that quote that you, it's, it's important to understand the perspective or in this case the bias of the person stating it. You know he has a lot of skin in the game when it comes to AEW. So you have to take some of the things that he talks about here with a grain of salt. However, he's not entirely inaccurate in terms of some of the things that he said, right? Like to sit there and pretend that this is a down period in wrestling at this current moment. Yeah, you can't really say that. And sometimes it's easy to sometimes dismiss the present, overrate the past, you know, distance, absence can make the heart grow fonder. And you remember things as time goes along as being a lot better than you actually remembered them when they were in real time. Um, and when you look at the industry, there are some positive indicators that could kind of support what Meltzer is saying here outside of just his kind of narrow worldview of, oh, it's not about the matches, but everything that he references is the matches, because that's typical Dave Meltzer. WWE certainly is having a good recent run for them as a company. WrestleMania this year was a record in terms of gate revenue and overall viewership. A caveat that, like, and it's a big caveat, right? That can be misleading because it's a two-night event, and you also have their show, their premium live events streaming on Peacock, which as of Comcast's last report, uh, earnings report out, had about 24 million domestic customers. So there's a lot more eyeballs that can happen, stance, stumble into it. So to be fair, like 
yes, those are really good indicators, but they have some caveats and require some context. Um, they're on pace for a year of record revenue. I've included the link to their Q1 earnings. I'm recording this before their two, Q2 earnings announcement call, which is coming up this week. Um, but you look at the TV performance as well, their 18 to 49 demo ratings compared to even last year are up across the board, whether that's Raw, NXT, SmackDown, they are all up. And most weeks, they're towards the top of total viewership, number one in that key demo in their time slot. You know, we'll see how Raw does once Monday Night Football starts again, and we'll see how SmackDown does in the long term whenever Roman's reign ultimately ends. But it's fair to say that from a pure business standpoint and overall fan interest standpoint, you know, WWE is not in a terrible spot, even if you look and say that they have fewer people watching them domestically on television than they had a few years ago, which is true. Um, now you flip over to AEW, and they've got some highlights that they can see, that everybody can see. They've got three primetime cable wrestling shows in Dynamite, Rampage, and Collision, spread across three different nights. Uh, their pay-per-view performance, for what they do, is pretty solid with a high rate of customer conversion, meaning that you know their highest viewed show is Dynamite, kind of lands in the eight to nine hundred ish thousand viewers a week, and they convert a hundred plus thousand of those into pay per view buying customers at fifty bucks a pop. That's not bad. Um, All In is going to do a huge attendance with you would presume a very monstrous gate. Those are some things that you can see that are at least somewhat verifiable. Part of the challenge with AEW, unlike WWE, is they are not a publicly traded company. Therefore, you don't have visibility into everything, and sometimes looks can be deceiving. What are their actual costs? How is that video game that they plunked millions of dollars into and took years to develop actually doing? What's their actual revenue and or profit? You know, these are fair questions. You don't know. And if you listen to like a Dave Melter or Sean Ross Sapp or anybody else, and they report out, you know, or you got Tony Khan saying that business is great and they're making record revenue, record profit. You have nothing to verify that. So take that with a grain of salt. It's not even a, a knock against Meltzer or Sapp or anybody else. It's just a reality. You can't see the fucking underlying data. You don't know. It's up to you whether you take the word for it or not. However, you can see some of the low lights with AEW. The ratings are solid for Dynamite. They're not spectacular and they're trending down compared to last year. The Rampage ratings, based off of the date and time slot, are acceptable, barely, but certainly not special. The collision ratings are about what you would expect for a Saturday night primetime show. Okay, but certainly not special, solid. But when you look at their live events, they're running a number of secondary venues in secondary cities or in, and or in some cases running venues below capacity. So it's not like everything AEW is doing is hot, just like everything WWE is doing is not hot. Impact and ROH are largely irrelevant. New Japan is down, I certainly think, in terms of U.S. interest compared to recent years. You have some other independent companies like GCW that seem to be doing okay. So it's certainly not a shit time in the business because even though the overall creative of the industry can sure feel like it sometimes, and that's true, in terms of interest, you still have some shows where they can draw big gates. You know, and 70 to 80,000 fans, certainly for WWE. We're going to see AEW do that in England pretty soon. You know, at the ticket prices that they charge is no small thing. And perhaps this is a great value version of a boom period. And we have to adjust our standards. Anybody that's going to argue that this is like the late 90s or it's like the 80s is full of shit and should not be taken seriously. And I would even say like, hey, whatever you want to say about cord cutting and all this other shit, the excuses, everything else. Like overall viewership is down compared to 15, 20 years ago, maybe even 10 years ago for sure. But the industry is different. Television and entertainment are different. Media is certainly different. The way you consume product is different. The ratings performance relative to the past stinks, but relative to current state is pretty solid. You've also got a number of fans in media that are able to make a legit living just talking about wrestling, gossiping about wrestling. That's not something you had as prevalent and frequent in years past. Again, entertainment, the business has changed. More wrestlers in the business are getting paid a decent amount to make a living, including in some of the independent scene. 
Although I'd argue the talent are massively underpaid and it's their own fucking fault for not unionizing and not trying to exercise their power and their leverage. They are massively underpaid, I think, relative to other entertainers and other industries. It's fair to question, though, like how sustainable is all this? What's WWE going to look like in a couple of years? What's AEW going to look like in a couple of years? Especially for AEW when you talk about they're no longer going to be the new thing. We're kind of at that point now. And in some ways, I feel like AEW is in a little bit of a lull. Like they always need that shot of the arm from the big thing, the shock factor. But how sustainable is that in the long term? I would certainly not call this a raging boom period. I don't even know if I would call it a boom period per se, but it's certainly not a downtime in wrestling. It's a solid time in wrestling, even if a lot of times the creative stinks. Um, so there's something here where fans are a little more engaged, a little more interested in wrestling overall than they have been in some previous years, that's for sure. We'll see how long it sustains. I hope we can sustain it for a period of time. But to call it a true boom period feels a bit excessive. Like I said, maybe it's a great value version of one. It's certainly not a downturn. There's certainly some positive indicators there with some things to be concerned about and worried about in the future. That's how I kind of think about wrestling in its current state in 2023.